What's up, everybody? It's Trey, and I'm sitting here with the members of Amen, Sonny, and Toomer. What's up, y'all? What's up, man? How you guys Appreciate doing? That. Yeah. First question I want to ask you guys is, uh, what fuels the anger on your new album? Uh, the anger probably stems from Casey Chaos, our lead singer. He's kind of the catalyst of the band, uh, the founding member, if you will. And um, he just comes from a uh, pure, true background of, of true hardcore punk yeah. and growing up, uh, much like myself around uh, rednecks and and jarheads that like to kick our asses when we're fight when we're little kids, and um, just seeing how um, America, as beautiful as the idea was when uh, it was first started, has uh, become hypocritical and and totally just shitty in nature, and uh, we're destroying ourselves. Basically, definitely. That's basically where the where the whole uh, the anger part of it will come from. You know, but it's also uh, also with that anger comes emotions such as despair and sorrow, because it's a f it's a bummer to watch this shit happen, man, all around us. It's a bummer to watch the planet go down. <laughs> you know, um, where'd you guys work on the album, and, and uh, how long did it take? We oh, good. Um, the album was done in uh, Indigo Ranch with Ross Robinson. It's where he takes all his bands, and um, it's uh, in Malibu, up in the canyons. It's a beautiful little spot, a little live-in area. Awesome. Hell yeah. Was it, was it fun doing it? Did you guys, you know, get out some anger doing it? It was great for me, man, because it was like, like Tumor said, it was in the canyons, and uh, we could go. I mean, at one point, Ross decided that I had to go on a hike with him every single day before I did my tracks because we went on one, we went on this gnarly hike, dude. Like, he was leaving, and I was like, wait, I got I to gotta change. And my girl was giving me hell, and I was like, I was like, fuck it, and I just ran out to try to get him. And I still have my, I had work boots on, dude, steel toe work boots, long pants, and, and a shirt. And we, and it's, it's like a straight, you go down this river, or down this creek bed, and there's huge boulders and rocks that have fallen from the canyons. And uh, we just haul ass all the way down to the bottom and kick into this waterfall for a minute and then haul ass back up. And man, I was so, like, we, it was the fastest one I've ever done. I got to the top, bro. And my dog was waiting for me up there, right? And, uh, and I get to the top finally, and I'm like, <laughs> and I totally, totally Ralph. And Ross is like, yeah! And then my dog comes over and starts licking it up. And Ross is like, oh yeah! And then Ross is like, all right, let's go do a track, man. So we go in and we did uh, TV Womb. And, um, and, and uh, I just blazed, man. I was just like, yeah! And after I was done, he was like, you're going on a hike every day before you go. Before you That's how you make some fucking music, yeah. yeah. I mean, I thought I was going to go in there and be like, yeah. But I went in there, I was just like, yeah, just killed it, man. It was not. You feel it in there. You can feel it together. That's unlocked, great. It, like unlock the door. You know what I mean? Hell yeah. Yeah. Dude, so. Definitely. <laughs> what do you guys think that? Uh, what do you guys think sets a man apart from other bands? Um. Basically, we do what we want to do, and we don't really want like a follow the leader band. Yeah. 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 Um. We uh. We just don't follow the trends, man. We do. Yeah, we got a couple of those here in Columbus that are local. <laughs> yeah. Right on. Basically, for us, it's like uh, uh, we were just doing an interview earlier, and the guy was like, "Yeah, it was really weird uh, time change, and I didn't know what to expect next." And that's, you know, not to put anybody down, but that's kind of uh, indicative of all the bands that are that are in uh, whatever genre you want to call it. Um, you know when it's going to go to a chill part, and then you know exactly when the part's going to come back up and get heavy again. Yeah. You know, light here, heavy here. Where, um, where it's it just wild fucking punk rock, yeah. man. It's dope as hell on you guys' album, man. It's sweet as fuck. Thanks, dude. Nice. Yeah, well, it's like working with Casey is, is, is really uh, made me a better guitar player, not because I've learned how to play uh, the A minor Phrygian mode or anything yeah, like that, yeah. but because I unlocked the door to just just mad chaos and to whatever the hell I wanted to do. Yeah. You know, not being locked into, okay, I have to do this here and then I have to do this. I can do whatever the fuck I want to do. Yeah. And the more I do what I want to do and the less I know that I'm going to do it, the better it's going to be. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's great, dude. Yeah, totally That's wild. Unpremeditated playing, you know? Definitely. Yeah. You didn't think of any of it before you started. You yeah, just, music, just music flowed too. with it, right? That's awesome, dude. It's great. Um, what is the message behind your music? Destroy yourself. <laughs> Don't hurt anybody else. Hurt yourself, because you're the one to blame. <laughs> um, uh, a message, I don't know, it's just, uh, um, amen, I'll just, I'll go straight to my spiel. Amen in Latin means so be it. And to me, it's a reflection, amen, the band is a reflection of the hypocrisy 
that we have wrought upon ourselves by saying, oh, you're free to do whatever you want, but don't do this. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then yeah. by telling people not to do things, like if you're a parent and you, and you tell your children not to do the things that they want to do, then they're going to do the things that they want to do uh, without you knowing. Exactly. If you let them know everything beforehand, if you go, this is like this, and you know what, this could fuck you up. If you want to do it, you know, you're a human being and you have to take that upon yourself and just know that I love you and if you do it, I'm still going to be here for you. But I'm going to let you know what's going to happen if you try to do that. Instead of going, no, don't do that because I say so. You know, you have to, just people have to be aware, man. You can't hide things because I want it that way. You can't hide things like that. You have to be, all right, this is why. When a kid goes, why, you don't go. Because I said so. You go, well, because if you do that, you're going to break your freaking arm. Okay. Exactly, man. I discuss that all the time with her. You know, I mean, it's the same. That's the same thing we talk about. That's great. Dude. Yeah, you got to just let people be aware, man. You know, instead of hiding behind this, this bullshit uh, MTV generation. Fuck, fuck MTV. Fuck them, motherfuckers. Hey. For real. I'm <laughs> <laughs> like, it's MTV. I'm like, oh, fuck you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> How was it just working with Ross Robinson? Was it just a, a totally different experience for you, man? Yeah, well, we had, Tumor and I had worked with him uh, before on a, on a song uh, that Snot did for the Strangeland soundtrack. Yeah, that's, that's great. Thanks, man. Thanks a lot. Yeah, we wrote it uh, with him and everything. We, all, we did it all together. And uh, to Ross, to me... This is, this is exactly how I see Ross. What he does for musicians, or at least what he did for me, was he literally reached in my chest, pulled my heart out, and showed it to me, and said, look, dude, that's yours. Come and get it, man. Go get it. It's yours, dude. Get it. Come on. <laughs> he didn't go, ha. Ah. Just showing your true self, man. He, he, what he does is he allows, I can, I can only speak for myself, but he allowed me to be who I already was. But w uh, being a musician, I'm the worst judge of myself. But he allowed me to be the true me that I'm usually a s I'm scared to, to let out because I think, you know, I suck or something like that. No way, dude. You don't yeah. fucking suck, yeah. man. But, I mean, it's easy, f easy for you to say that, easy for me to say that. But inside, you know, we're humans, so we have all these things that everyone taught us, you know, feel guilty about this. And, you know, God will, God will bring down hellfire upon you if you do that. The world's going to end in 2000, too. <laughs> yeah, maybe. The world as we know it. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's another thing I talk about. Um, I'll ask you something about something that happened, you know. What was the transition from snot to amen like? For who, me? For both you guys. Oh, okay. Um, for me, you know, um, I joined the band in February, which was a few months after Lynn passed away. And... At the time, I was still in shock, you know, basically about losing Lynn. All of player. us were, man. And um, I had my boys with me, you know, Sonny and Shannon, who's been a good friend of mine fucking since I was teenagers. And I just, I, I needed those guys for support, man. And I needed Amen, definitely, to, to bring me out of the depression that I could see myself headed into. And, um... I'm just happy, man. I'm happy to have Amen, a new band. Happy to be with my friends. And um, everything from here on out is for Lynn, man. I can keep his fucking spirit alive, man. That's right, dude. You know, he's going to be fucking missed for ages. Yeah, definitely. Hell yeah, bro. Well, uh, Sonny, you want to tell us about the music? Oh, dude, that's dope. We got to get a shot of that right there. Hell yeah. Sonny, will you tell us uh, about the music that you made with uh, Vanilla Ice? Sure. What do you want to know? Oh, just uh, any little anecdote, whatever, you know? <laughs> Basically what happened was uh, I joined Amen, and amongst the time that I was learning uh, about 40 Amen songs and writing uh, about 15 new ones with the band, um, uh, we were doing pre-production for the record at the same time. And uh, Casey, I remember the day Casey, uh, Shannon, and I were, were working on stuff. And Ross comes in, and he's like, hey, what's up, guys? You know, I got this uh, project uh, I want to do. You know, I got offered to me. Sonny, I want you to play guitar. Shannon, I want you to play drums. And Casey, I want you to help. I want you to write with me. Um, so we're all, fuck yeah, dude. What is it, man? And he says, Vanilla Ice. And we're like, what? <laughs> we're like, all right, all, right, all right, seriously, who is it, dude? And he's all, Vanilla Ice. And I remember Shannon and I looking at each other like going, but like Ross, Ross was t like throwing his pitch and we were just like, but as it came along, as it went along, he, Ross was like, um, you know, complete creative control. We can do whatever we want to. Um, 
you know, get paid for it, which wasn't bad. <laughs> and plus, Definitely. plus the, the deal was he was going to do it regardless of, of who played with him. And uh, frankly, I would much rather, much rather be in the studio writing and recording music with Ross Robinson and my band members than sitting at home on my fucking ass uh, working a job. So we did it, man. We wrote 10 songs in 10 days. Um, didn't even meet him, meet, didn't even meet uh, Rob until we went to the studio. And he came in and heard the music and he was like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> and we all, he came in and we were like throwing down drum tracks. And the way Ross does it is he has everybody in the room together with the drummer, with the exception of one of the bass players. There's two bass players on it. Oh, yeah. And he was in the room with his, his, uh, his amp because he has to get feedback off of it and stuff. So uh, Rob was in the control room watching us throw down the first couple songs, and he was just like, oh, shit. Ross is fucking clotheslining me, and yeah. we're running into each other, and fucking, <laughs> oh, it was so rad, dude. It was a great experience, man. I don't care. Um, I don't, frankly don't give a fuck what anybody has to say about me working with Vanilla Ice or any of us. That fool's got more integrity than, yeah, than, yeah. Uh, than any of these uh, mass-produced MTV bands. Because yeah. you know what? Every band that's on MTV right now is Vanilla Ice. Any of you fools that are on, on MTV. Are Eminem, uh, motherfucker. Fuck you. Yeah, here's the deal. MTV created Vanilla Ice, basically. Not created him, but made him what he was. If there was no MTV, there'd be no Vanilla Ice. But then, eight years later, MTV goes back and goes, Whoa, who liked Vanilla Ice? Well, you did, asshole, because you yeah. made him. So <laughs> brought, they fucking brought him on MTV and fucking tried to humiliate him again, man. Did you guys see oh, that shit? Well, they totally humiliated yeah, him. Yeah, dude. You know, and... uh. MTV just is, uh, is like Big Brother, dude. They force feed you, and they say, this is what you have to like. You like this so much. You love Britney Spears. Yeah. You love NSYNC. They so feed you that shit. Yeah, what? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's disgusting, man. It's <laughs> disgustingly funny. But uh, Every time I turn it on there, I'm like, geez, does it fucking end? You know what I mean, dude? I like M2 sometimes because they play, like, old school shit. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. You see M2? Who gets that, you know? Yeah, yeah no, I know. Nobody yeah. fucking gets that in cable around here, especially. We, we only got it when we were at Indigo Ranch. <laughs> <laughs> With the satellite. That's sweet. That's sweet. Well, man, you know, thanks a lot for taking the time. Oh, fucking give me the interview. Sure. Uh, one more thing, man. What do you guys got in store for us tonight? We got a little, uh, little witchcraft. <laughs> little voodoo. No, we're basically, um... We have true music, man, true expression. There's no, we're not shooting for any demographic. We don't really um, give a shit if you don't like the clothes we wear or if we don't wear the clothes that you can go out and buy it. Fucking, uh, you can't, you know, go and purchase the endorsements that we have or whatever. Um, we just, it's about music, man. You know, it really is. And I might, I know I'm pretty, but I ain't as pretty as a couple of titties. <laughs> Hell yeah. You got something else to say, bro? Just that um, everything's... Untrue, man. <laughs> Thanks, Sonny. <laughs> Hell yeah. Well, Columbus, this was an Amen interview, Al Rosa Villa. See you next time. Peace out, motherfuckers. Hey, this is Sonny. And this is Toomer. Amen. So let the revolution begin. Show, yeah. man. I got 50 shows. Sticker on your Play that. Oh, yeah. Show oh, you yeah. the sticker.